Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fully Charged Show. Now, Fully Charged is 10 years old. Amazing changes have taken place in that time. And we've been trying to keep track of those changes, to keep a record of how things have changed, to find the many really positive things that have happened in the last decade. Now, eight years ago, we filmed an episode in the National Grid Control Room about the changes that were just starting to happen back then. Since then, we have seen a massive increase in renewable electricity generation in this country and indeed all over the world. In this episode, I speak with James Kellaway, National Grid ESO Energy Intelligence Manager. Now, we cover many, many topics, but the one thing that James said in this episode that really stuck with me that I've been thinking about ever since he said it is this. He said, we are the first generation who understand climate change and the last who can do anything about it. So, James, well, for a start, thank you very much for, for joining us today and finding time, because I, I, I know it's a, you know, you're working, you've got your children. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not quite as straightforward as like, anyway. So Fully Charged has been going for 10 years. And when I looked back, you know, earlier this year at what was, what this, the, the, our generating capacity and what, where we were getting our electricity from 10 years ago, that, that is a fascinating window to look through because it was very, very different. So what I would love to do quickly is kind of plot what happened in that 10 years and then what p- potentially or what you're preparing for in a way for the next 10. It's remarkable. It's, 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 yeah. remarkable. It's, it's a really large transformation and the really exciting stuff for us is that it's actually continuing and accelerating. Right. Um, so um, if, I, if I jump back to oh, it's 2010-ish, 2012-ish, you know, the, probably lots of coal, lots of gas, um, nuclear, a very small amount of solar um, to the point that I don't think we even had a display for it in the control room at that point. Um, wind was quite small. Um, I remember I found an old YouTube video of our then boss saying this, the disruption, disruption and the things we have to take into account with just 500 megawatts of wind on the system. You know, we're, wow. we're, now, at something, we're now at something like 20 gigawatts capacity-ish. <laughs> so, so, it's, wow. it, so you've sort of gone from that world into a world where last year it was the first year where uh, renewables actually overtook fossils um, right. for the, for the, as the primary source. And this was um, this was like over the whole year, the average over the whole year. Average for the whole year. Average for wow. the whole year. Wow. Wow. Um, so I mean, even just this, this February, you know, uh, wind was the predominant power source for GB in, in February. You know, wow. and we're and we're, and, we're, and that wasn't in a during the lockdown period. That was actually during a regular of February. Yes, winter, it was. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we're seeing so we're seeing a whole bunch of stuff happen, and it's it's a really exciting space to work in because right. everything's changing. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if you look at the, uh, just from a, a carbon reduction, you know, we've got the, the challenge set by the government to be, you know, carbon neutral by 2050. Um, within National Grid ESO, actually, we've set the ambition that by 2025, we're going to be able to operate for at least an hour, um, zero carbon. Um, wow. So wow. we're going to try that. But even just if you just zero in on maybe the last, you know, five or six years, um, you know, the amount of carbon drop off with coal coming off the system yeah. is remarkable. So, uh, for example, the, the average carbon intensity, which is how we measure how clean the power is, has dropped from well up into the 500s down into just under 200s. Right. Um, so 60% reduction. So it's extraordinary. Well, That's a lot. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so just put that in a bit, put, put that in a bit of context, right? If you've got an EV, it's actually that much cleaner than if you charged it five, six years ago. Yeah. Another thing which is, you know, I think reveals mm. my stupidity and ignorance, but also I think the general, you know, possibly general lack of understanding is that, you, that the importance of balancing what we want in our yeah. homes and offices and factories and what you yeah. supply, you know, and I just thought, electricity you just switch it on and it's there yeah. which is what we've all grown up with but actually when we switch it on you've got to go oh they've switched that on i better make more to fill, really? to fill that and yeah. that is and that is yeah how i don't know how often you're doing that but when i was in the control room uh, seven or eight years ago yeah. watching that constant change i mean i just thought yeah. it would be like it's there uh, it might go up a bit tonight no it was going like that all the time so, 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 the, so, the, so the really cool thing about this what the transition we're going through now is that's becoming even more interesting i because, bet yeah. um if you imagine if you go back to a world maybe 20 years ago where you had a power plant you said i, I wanted to do this please um a lady or a man at the other end controlled a big fireball and electricity <laughs> fell out effectively <laughs> it kind of did what you asked it to right? yeah 
with renewables, this presents us with a really exciting challenge because actually it does what the weather tells us. Yes. Yeah. And weather in weather in GB is obviously awesomely stable, as we know. Yeah. Um, so you've got that in, that unpredictability to um, to look at look out yeah. for as well as well as all the behaviour on who's changing what, whilst yeah. also keep it in the fine tolerances. Yes. Um, and in fact, we're using some pretty decent techniques to predict that now. So right. the, group that, the group that I lead, is, we're actually using artificial intelligence to help predict what's going wow. on there and wow. feed into the control centre. So I mean, has that developed then in say the last five six years? Because I remember when I was at the control room there was a prediction for what the following day the following day was going to be windy so at that stage and someone showed me a graph and it was like well tomorrow we know we're going to get a lot of wind so this is what we're doing for that but has that has that the granularity of that improved of that knowledge big time big time so if if i if i give you an example of uh, the solar prediction um so uh, we update the the main systems maybe every half an hour at the moment with revised revised solar stuff but that's based on like a pyramid of models so at any given point, we're maybe running twenty plus thousand concurrent models just to figure out solar. Wow! And that's all, <laughs> and, and that's all done by the AI. So it's it's, right. it's really quite cool. A couple of things that have intrigued me um, is is the kind of things like the agile agile tariffs that are just appearing now. Those yeah. fluctuating tariffs, and I think you know vehicle to grid. And I'm not so much thinking vehicle to grid on a domestic level, but yeah. on co- on the commercial companies I've seen starting to use vehicle to grid, which is. Yeah you know, where you have 500 vans or trucks at night yeah. charging and discharging, you know, you're talking then usable amounts of, uh, you know, backup electricity if you need it or however you use it. Yeah, you really are. So, you, so you, when you look at uh, V2G or, or battery storage generally, it's, it's about the volume of capacity you have available. Yeah. Um, so you can have lots and lots of really small ones um, that do what they like but to a certain extent, or you can have lots of big ones. Um, so a good example would be electric buses. You know, wouldn't right. it be great if we all had electric buses, you know, like, some places in China do, um, but a bus only makes money when it's moving. Yes. Um, so in the middle of the night, probably when people don't want to get on a bus, is when they stop and charge it. So you're going to have to bolt charge those sort of buses then. Uh, likewise with EVs. Yeah. Um, so um, vehicle to grid is, is, is a really good idea because um, it's probably worth covering, you know, why do we actually need batteries on the grid at all? You know, it's yeah. probably worth mentioning this. Yes, I think um, it is, yeah. Yeah, um, so you've got, um, so we have frequency. Yeah, which is uh, going on. So we get 50 times a second, a thing, a thing turns around effectively. Uh, and we have to keep that within a really tight tolerance. Now, what a battery can do is it can help catch that if it speeds up or slows down very right. quickly. And that's that's really awesome for us. So um, if uh, if you go, if it's going slightly too fast, you can charge your battery and it will slow it down again, just like a bicycle going up a hill. Right. Yeah. Um, and likewise, if you're going too slow, you can add a little bit of, push assist if you like on your bicycle and it can it go can back up, up. It. right yeah so it's like one of those things it says like if, if you're there and it goes there the sooner you can sort of tap that back again yeah you only, you only need to do it a little bit if you let it go all the way over there you've got, you've got a big problem yeah yes. so if you can act really fast it's awesome yes so in that sense then it's not so much the well it's it's a combination of the capacity and the speed of reaction so if you've got yeah. a a fairly big battery with, I don't know what, yeah. many, many megawatt hours, but it can kick yeah. a huge amount out in a thousandth of a second. That yeah. will register that, that will Absolutely. push that needle back to the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we're, so we're starting to see them being built all, all over now. Um, so it's still quite a small percentage of the overall capacity at the moment, but there are more and more being built because right. uh, battery prices have plummeted, thankfully, in uh, recent, yeah. recent years. I mean, you and I both know that, you know, our EVs cost a lot less than they probably did. 10 yeah. years ago and they're great because you can actually use them for several things at once you don't just have to use it for that one service right um so you can just say okay i'm going to charge now you know so one yeah. of the really really cool things with renewables is that um actually they can sometimes produce too much energy yes yeah for you yeah. um and, and and that's something that can actually be really helpful if you've got a bunch of batteries because you can you can spill it over and, can, and, yeah. and charge it up you know um yeah. and whereas the debate traditionally has been around okay um how how much power uh, do we actually produce um, uh, and, and actually use to, to run stuff? Um, it can be around about, well, okay, it's what actually makes that power determines what you use. It's not necessarily just the energy efficiency. Right. And then, then, you, then you're into, can you make hydrogen? Can you um, yeah. charge batteries? Can you give people negative pricing at home? Yes, you can. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a fr- fr- friend of mine with, uh, with, with te- Tesla all set up, you know, I think they were being paid Ten yes. per kilowatt hour to charge the car this weekend. This, uh, this weekend, I mean, no. Uh, one guy said I I put fifty four kilowatt hours in my car 
and I got yeah. paid, you know, it was like, it wasn't a huge amount. It was like two pounds, 43 pence for yeah, doing yeah, it. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah, go, yeah. that is insane that that is possible. And, you know, we, we, we saw this weekend, you know, the carbon intensity went down nationally to 46 to grams. So low. Yeah. yeah, is, yeah. And that is, the, is that a record? I mean, it was certainly, that, I've that never is, seen that That before. is an absolute, absolute record. It was right. in the, we, we made it down to the high 50 the previous year, I think. Right. Um, but that's the first time we've gone sub 50. Um, wow. And, you know, that's the sort of average we want to be looking at by 2030. Yes. Yeah. yeah if, we're, if we're going to get to net zero. So actually yeah. it's a case of, yeah, we can do it. It's just a case of we need to scale the um, yeah. the assets up a little bit because right. obviously, um, you know, we're looking at a period of lower demand at the moment. You know, what is very obvious at the moment is the two cleanest forms of generating large yeah. amounts of electricity yeah. are renewables and nuclear. I mean, those yeah. are the, you know, it's not, I have, and I've n- never had a problem with nuclear power mm. stations I I'd happily have one in my backyard. Yeah. But I don't want a nuclear a long term nuclear waste storage facility in my backyard. That's always been my no. that's been my problem. <laughs> no, no, exactly. Let's get the tokamak working, you know. Yeah. Um, but, but anyway. Okay. So, yeah. so nuclear's got one key advantage of renewable and that's inertia. Yeah. Yes. Um so one of the um one of the things that we're really um we grapple with on a daily basis is the inertia on the system. So right. Put really simply, if you've got a, a turbine spinning, which is essentially a really huge lump of metal turning very quickly with a lot of kinetic energy, yeah. if there's a fault or an interruption or a force going against that, it'll kind of bounce off, won't it? You know, it's, it's not going to be a big deal. Yeah. If you don't have that inertia spinning, i.e., a solar panel or a wind turbine or other non synchronous gen, um, then that little tiny fault can actually have a really big impact. Right. Yeah. And also, remember we talked about the, the, the bicycle pedals and the, and the yeah. frequency? That can then change much quicker. Right. Yeah. So yes, you can deploy battery and other tech to you know stabilize that, yeah. but that becomes a much harder job to do. Right. You know. Um, so that's that's our real challenge to get to the zero, um, the zero carbon stuff because yeah. a lot of the inertia is within currently the in GB is within the gas plants and within the nuclear plants. Right. That's where the majority of that inertia sits. Right. Um, and without that, we can't keep the grid stable. Right. So. Right. So that's our big challenge. So either you need some sort of set of services, be it battery, V2G, or yeah. stuff that you can rely on 100% of the time. Yeah. Uh, remember, you know, so our our mantra is we need to be up and running normally 99.99% of the time. Right. Um, so that's that's the sort of the, the, the standard we run to. Yeah. Um, so either we need to have some a set of services or a, a set of large rotating mass. Right. Um, so um, we might put my personal view is that it's somewhere between nuclear and a whole bunch of you know, ancillary services that go out and help. Um, I mean, ESO is uh, doing a whole bunch of stuff at the moment with uh, st- uh, stability pathfinders, where we're basically going out and saying, how do we actually do this? Yes. You know? Okay. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I mean, sort of commercially, how do, how, do, how do we engage yeah. and do this commercially? You know, yeah. we, we've got the theory nailed. It's just a case of how do we actually deliver that as a set of services nationally? <laughs> I mean, one of the great things is, is if we can increase the renewables in GB, of course, is we can actually export that renewable energy. Yes. Out. Yes. You know, and, you know, likewise, we're building an interconnector, I think, from Norway at the moment, which is, yeah. you know, and Norway's beautifully clean when it comes to power. Oh, I know. Um, so I, 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 am, I envy their hydro, you know. Yes. Oh, if only we had, if we had half as many mountains as they yes, have and, and big rivers. Indeed. I know they're very, they're very spoiled like that. And they've got a population, mm. they've got a country about four times bigger than us and a population the size of Scotland. <laughs> so that's really unfair. It's all, yeah, it is, isn't it? Now, the, the other one is heat. So yeah. it, it is the so the electrification of transport and heat because if mm. you look I mean if you look at the whole our energy consumption as a country yeah. uh, the, the majority of it is in transport and heat you know yeah. if you look at how we light our homes it's not that much light not now, not now we've gone LED no it's not no yeah so so that that's to, to, uh, from the grid's point of view that's not actually a problem it's just a case right. of you know what do we need to put where um, so if, if I always I always give a couple of examples of this so. One of the questions that we always get quite a lot is, well, if everyone plugs their car in at home, is the world going to melt? Right. Um, the answer is no. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't remember having a huge debate when everyone installed electric showers, which uses about 7.4 kilowatts. Yes. You run them. It's, about, it's the same as charging an EV at home. Yeah. Um, likewise, running your, your heating system, it depends how it's operated, right? And this is where right. the spark controls come in. So right. uh, if I take my house, for example... Um, I've got a 38 kilowatt hour gas boiler, great big thing, yeah. Right. And, it, and it and it fires up and it will instantly produce 38 kilowatt hours and stuff, and everything gets really hot. Right. Fantastic. With an electric one, run it slower, trickle it in. Right. But keep, keep it going longer. Actually, the um, you get the same effect at home. You, you, there's no discomfort, um, but actually, you're not putting the stress and strain on the on the on the power coming in. Right. So it's just a case of 
thinking a bit differently. Um, we kind of get the same thing when, when we say, well, okay, well, if we set up these rapid, char rapid charger hubs everywhere, you know, surely that's going to cause a problem. Um, actually, not necessarily. You know, a lot of the, the a lot of the big ones are actually paired with batteries, so they trickle charge in, um, right. and then they rapid discharge from the battery into the cars. Yes, yes. So the actual, so the actual grid coming in is is, is relatively a minor thing. Yes, you can yeah. grid connect them, and certainly if you're looking at large scale electric buses, sure, absolutely need to do that. But yeah. is that different than a huge industrial load or an, or something or a yes. huge la laser on a university campus? No, it's not. So it's just right. a case of understanding what's needed. They only see that moment when the air is still and there's no wind and it's dark and there's no solar. Yeah. They don't see the time when we're not consuming that much electricity and there's incredibly clear skies with staggering amounts of solar and really high winds at sea yeah. producing huge amounts. Of, and that, I think, is probably um, as big a problem, if not more of a problem, is that mm. overproduction. I mean, that's the, the, yeah. the flip side. They actually work too well, those systems, in some ways. Yeah. Exactly. And it's, 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 sometimes it's a bit of a strange concept to get used to, isn't it? But actually, it's cheaper to pay people to have free power. Yes. In fact, pay them to use it. Because actually, if you've got to turn off one of those turbines or, or you know, cut, cut them off so that we can balance, which sadly, sometimes we have to do. Yeah. Um, actually, that costs, that costs the consumer money to do that. You right. know, it's, it's not an action we take lightly, but it's, it's something that costs money. So actually, if you pay you and me 10p to charge our, our cars instead, yeah. actually, that, that's cheaper. That is cheaper. And, that, and also, that power going in is, is zero carbon power. Yes. So yeah. so why not? You know, it's just yes. a different different way of thinking. So in a sense, then, the, the, the technology we are seeing emerging is, you know, it's certainly challenging to the to the you know future planning of the national grid but it's kind of i get the impression from you that it's exciting and plausible and there'll be other models that will emerge that we can't even imagine yet where you go oh my god if we can do that we can do this <laughs> it is one of one of the greatest places where, where we work is where we're obviously that we've got some really great engineers there we've got some really great academics as well and some and a whole bunch of people in the middle and modelers and, and operations guys uh, guys and girls and we all we all sort of work together to figure these things out Right. Um, and it's it's a really exciting place to work at the moment because the, the the prize of getting it right is actually we can tackle climate change big time. Yes. You know, um, you know, we're the, it's, it's a bit of a strap line. It's kind of like we're the first generation to understand climate change, the last that can actually do anything about it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, I haven't heard um, that before. That is very good. Yeah. yeah. And quite so, so, quite frightening, but also good. Yeah. It is. But yeah, so I, I'm hoping to say to my grandkids, yeah, this is the bit that we did. When you do see a large scale electrical piece, piece of electrical infrastructure i don't know how much of that you would need to upgrade to accommodate you know m multiple terawatts of offshore wind or you know everyone's got solar on their roof all those yeah. potentials so the beauty of it is a lot of the big infrastructure was built sort of in the 50s and 60s so you're talking apollo era so it's, right. it was beautifully over engineered it's really yeah. solid kit and you can do an awful lot with it yes right. the control the control systems and you know the mechanicals yes you need to keep continuous upgrade to keep that working but the actual capacity is there in the super grid because right. it, it was built to it was built to have a few number of very large power stations pumping power out to everybody whereas actually now we, we're trying to use it in a completely different way which is that it just balances across right um and so when it's balancing across and wants to increase the power actually it's fine the capacity is there i sort of assumed that was the model that that infrastructure is built on and now it's yeah. got to deal with 10 millions of inputs in a sense yeah. millions of rooftop solars and wind turbines yeah. rather than hardware yeah it's, it's so software relays yeah, it's kind of like the, the sort of ancillary bits around the edges that you, right. just, you sort of tweak just to use it in a slightly different way in 10 years time because you were, you were saying right at the beginning you know there is more coming i mean where where do you see the biggest growth in a sense of renewable of renewable systems which ones do you think are going to be the yeah big ones? so so I, I'd like to say all of them um right. uh, you know so uh, we're seeing more and more wind coming on you know if you look at some of the Siemens turbines I think you're looking at maybe 14 megawatts per yeah. turbine yes that, that's bonkers that's bigger yeah. than the Eiffel Tower bonkers yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know in, in size um but it's, it's absolutely incredible you know the Norwegians have made um I think it's floating turbines so you don't yeah. so you can just anchor them with ropes you don't have to take them and actually Put drill them, them down the into, seabed, this, into yeah. the seabed. Um, solar, we've got a lot of solar in the UK at the moment. I think it's like 13-ish gigawatts of solar, of which wow. we yield maybe 9.7-ish. Someone will correct me on the record later, but I think it's about 9.7 right. gig at the moment because of where we are so far north. Yes. So yeah, we'll see more of that coming. Um, yeah. You know, tidal, we know we've got many estuaries where that could work really yeah. well. Uh, the challenge there is actually the cost. Yes. Um, per kilowatt hour of what you get back, uh, same with nuclear. You know, right. it's, it's kind of it's balancing value to the consumer 
um, security of supply because you need right. different types of fuel for different reasons. Extraordinary. I mean, it is. I, that, I, in a sense, that's what gives me joy about doing this show is that it's it's mm. uh, you know there is undoubtedly really difficult challenges. All the stuff yeah. around the materials in batteries, you know, and cobalt mm. and all those discussions, which are all you know really. I think I, mm. I, very important, legitimate concerns. But then you you know, I know, I can feel it in my guts that someone is going to come up with batteries that don't use cobalt. Well, they already yes. have. And then yeah, someone's yeah. going to co come up with batteries that use really common, like the glass battery that's being developed by the, yeah. the team with John Goodenough. And you go, yeah. well, that, prob that might not work, that one. But one of these weird new batteries yeah. is going to work and is going to be yeah. transformative. And, it, you know, if you could build a 10 terawatt hour battery yeah. for a, a million quid as opposed to three yeah. billion which are ten hundred billion it would cost at the moment exactly. then then you go oh okay so we all right let's have five of them <laughs> yeah but i mean, I mean the, the engineering and tech's changing all the time yes if someone, had, if someone had told me 25 years ago i'd have a car on my drive that will steer itself quite happily i would say no james that is brilliant thank you so much uh oh, pleasure talking to you i think i think we've covered everything i wanted to cover uh yeah no good really awesome. good thank you very much yeah. indeed well if you need any more you know where we are uh, i do that's really good always, no we'll come back very welcome thank you yeah, very do. much